normally have, you know, catering. This is just trying, fabulous. We're trying to set standards. Well, you have. St. Francis of Assisi, da da da, Church Come Community Centre, easily the best building in the 20th century. Unfortunately, it's been demolished. That are very well known for passive house and uh, passive house in schools and so forth. The building is, is in two halves, and effectively, it's two buildings the storage building on the left. And then you have the atrium in the middle, which is the kind of the buffer between the two buildings. And on the right-hand side, uh, there is the, uh, the conference rooms, the offices, uh, and also the uh, public reading room. Large areas to uh, look at the maps and a very efficient system for retrieving them, uh, and all terribly efficient and well, well organised. Well, they uh, used to run um, a set of trains in the morning and in the evening. Yeah. Uh, this is by Angus Jameson, who is a very scruffy, arrogant uh, Scot, and, but he's done some good stuff in Hereford. They wanted a reception area, uh, you know, this is TRP, and it's, I, I find it in, intriguing really, because at the right hand end is nearly all staircase, and then one big room upstairs where they will occasionally have meetings. The council used to rent it when they were promoting the Enterprise Zone. Uh, but it's actually, as you see, not never, used. Never used, I mean, and virtually. Isn't it a shame? Some huge concrete structures which you can walk into, which is where they actually assembled the shells, and they were blast things. So if there was an explosion, only the, only the people, people who were doing it. Yeah would have been blown out, but not the rest. It's bigger than a football pitch, isn't it, Barry? Oh, oh, no, really how many football pitches are in there? Two, three. Oh, at least three. Yeah. But do you see what I mean about just leaving it? Because oh, yeah, 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 no, it's atmospheric as it is. You've only got halfway. What's your view so far? Is it... There's all sorts of comparisons with Calatrava and this one and that one, which I think are a little bit extreme. Well, I was going to say, it's not Foster's Bridge at Millau. No, no. Well, come on, that's... <laughs> but I like the curvature of it. I think it's got, I think actually walking it, I personally find it slightly heavy. The principal route run in the city centre is East Street and West Street. Uh, it is one way. Uh, the uh, road is, uh, is very narrow and the pavements <laughs> are also very narrow. But there is at one point where the, there's a lane from High Town down to the cathedral crosses uh, E Street, and uh, because the buildings are on top of the junction, uh, it is actually very, very dangerous. Angus Jameson again. Uh, extending a bit of the cathedral school with a second floor and new entrance and so forth. <laughs> this is Cathedral Close, the subject of a £6 million refurb. Partly it was to do with a lot of new drainage and underground stuff. Partly it was just putting some expensive tarmac down. But because they managed to work it, they were somewhat extravagant on their spend and instead of proper builders' sheds we have oak framed and all rather lovely uh, workshops that we will pass in a moment. And again because we were so extravagant we moved Elgar leaning against his bicycle from here to here so that he no longer looks at the inspiring tarp. Well if we walk a little bit further towards the, um, uh, the chain library and uh, the building which holds the Mundi. Uh, we can look back to the cathedral to see the, um, uh, the passageway, um, uh, which I think was formerly part of the cloisters, uh, you know, from the cathedral you know, round to this building. And in the cloisters, at the far end, the, the cloisters now contains um, uh, a small shop and, um, and a cafe. It's fantastic. I love it the is windows. Wonderful. Love the windows. Yeah. It was, yeah. was it something else before it was a nightclub or was that the original abuse? Oh no, something before that, yeah. yeah.
It's a simple little building. I think the, the character of that street as it is at the moment, the piggledy nature, it is, it's quite interesting. But you haven't been in the old market yet. We're now in the old market redevelopment, which is built where the old cattle market was. It is largely retail, but with a good number of restaurants, and it has certainly brought increased footfall into the city. And there is anecdotal evidence that that is increasing a return to activity within High Town. It doesn't look like it's weathering particularly well, do you know? 2001, HBG. You're on four floors, by the look of it. Yeah, I mean, like, there's actually five floors if you think about it. But. Gosh, it's, okay, it's, so it's a mansion. It's level. Very briefly, it's in a conservation area. That's a grade two listed house. Uh, Curtilage is, is listed. Obviously, there's huge design challenges when you think about well, what, what's appropriate. And then you look around, you see, oh, you can't quite see there, but it's a 60s house. You've got that mansion there, with very, very fine. A lot of Victorian mansions yeah. on top of the hill. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the Tudor Beaton estate there, yeah. and you've got Sort of over there you've got sort of 70s housing so how do you how do you relate to that and there was outline planning permission for a kind of a pastiche sort of regency ish type villa which clearly didn't work you know the uh, the levels were all wrong anyway it couldn't possibly be built mm -hmm. and it was set back up the the slope so it kind of dominated or would have dominated that house and we thought the, the only thing you can do is to make sure you don't dominate the, the Georgian listed house. We looked at some sort of Georgian style but thought it just wouldn't work. We then thought what might work and when you think about Georgian it is about rhythm, it is about windows yeah, yeah. you know really expressing themselves and, and Bauhaus sort of came to us as, as a compromise. Now You'd imagine getting planning permission in, in a conservation area is, is difficult, especially when you're building something that seems to be so out of keeping. I will say that the conservation officer and the planning officers, once they understood what we're trying to do, we were very, very supportive. There are a cluster, you know, Andy Simmons, Simmons Mills, uh, into Passive House as well, and that's, that's, that's very good. Um, and yeah, there are passive house contractors as well so it's so what we can do is walk down to the front Claire's going to talk through the construction details it's a cold space that's a warm space so there's going to got the insulation has got to go on this wall and under that ceiling and it's also all got to be airtighted and of course structurally if it were just brick Onto, onto block work, that would be a great thermal leak because the heat could just travel through the block blocks. So the special black bricks there are glass foam glass, which is structurally strong but also insulating. So there's the front door. Yeah. You'll come into a cupboard on your left, and then this is the lift shaft. Oh, lift? Yes, we're putting it, we want everything to be ready for when, when we're old. So we've got, the stairs, <laughs> we've got the stairs to keep us fit in as long as we can. And for 20 years, this is going to be a coat cupboard. Yeah. And then we intend to be carried out in a box. The, it's now going to be, uh, half of it is a big sliding door and the other half is fixed glass. And so you slide so that this becomes half open onto a terrace. You walk up here into kitchen there, dining table here. Um, this, this, all this space next to the bit of timber there is a big sliding door so that the living room can either be very open plan or it can be quite separate if you want. Mm -hmm. Radio one in here and TV in there. Mm -hmm. And then a little um, utility room on the left there and the lift shaft again behind you. 
virtually everywhere we've got pocket sliding doors for the internal ones to just to save space and be mm -hmm. nice and minimal and then and no architraves architrave architrave free and shadow gaps around the doors triple glazing yes it is. you'll notice they've got black plasticky looking edges rather than the the metal ones that you usually see on double glazing that's because that metal conducts the heat out and so now that that makes that also a thermal break first the air tightness membrane is outside this block work and then there's all the insulation and then the the off-white render coat the plant room. yeah because you have the mbhr with the sort of heat exchanger you have a boiler up there, you have sort of, you know, all the uh, photovoltaics feeding in down there. So everything is in that sort of central um, sort of service. When you're building anything bespoke, then yeah, you, you just pay the price and it's, yeah. it's there's, no, there's no way around it. It's you think you've planned everything, you think you've thought of everything. Unless you've done it three or four times. You have no chance. Yes. We've got plans for the garden as well. Yeah. Well, not not a great gardener, but yes, we want to. We've, we've left it a bit to, to to sort of settle in once we've got the house done and the terraces, the terraces are fixed. But quite beyond that, how we're going to do the layers, mm. the levels. At the moment, you can see there's a sort of little secret garden. Is that yours? There. Yes, that's ours. The neighbour's house is listed and that includes the gateposts. And our, gate, the our gateposts and are also part of their curtilage. So we've got two gateposts and a gate over there which have been taken down for access and they're going to be put yes. back um, yeah. just as they are and it says in the planning permission yeah. that we have to do that. Yeah. Is this a year it's on from when you It's a year and started? two months. I think it was the beginning of... End Beginning, of end of May. End of May they started with the so digging the foundations. So from breaking ground, as it were, it's, 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 it's about a year, just over a year. So when, do, when are you going to move in? When's the date? Have you set yourself a date well, to move in? If we're not in by Christmas, I'll be really upset. And cross. Christmas? But it should, if, if nothing goes wrong, it should be in the autumn. No architraves round the, uh, the doors. So it's going to be sort of one colour, simple as possible. Um, right the way through, and as I say, the floor is going to be all the same micro concrete floor, including staircase. So, finish. what's the difference between ordinary concrete and micro concrete? Micro concrete is just a sort of it's almost like a, um, a paste that you put on, you trowel it, and you put another trowel layer on it. It's only three mil thick, but it three gives mil. three mil. You're not worried about it cracking. If the screed is strong underneath, it should be okay. If you do get cracks, well, cracks happen in concrete anyway. So you just it's going to be a hell of a load to carry for that. For that, yeah, but it's it's solid. Um, is, it, is it sort of almost like self-leveling because you get yeah. this stuff which is self-leveling? Yeah. yeah, but it, you know, part of the beauty it's trowel finish, so that you do get that sort of mottling effect of proper concrete right so it just yeah it's not this it's not going to be totally homogenous there is going to be some sort of, sort of and and your and the pipe work for your underfloor heating is 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 within that oh, well it's below that's in the screed it's in the screed yeah, it's electric the screed. no no it's, it's got water Hot water, water. Yeah. water yeah mm. in theory passive house you you rarely ever need it but we just put mm. it in as a, as a precaution mm.